What's going on, smart people? I don't know about you, but when I was an undergrad picturing what it would be like to be a PhD student for physics, I had this, this conception that people would be taking courses up until the end of their PhD while also doing their research. And as it turns out, that is just not the case. So today I wanna to talk about exactly how many courses I have left to take throughout this graduate program. You see, regardless of if you are wanting to study condensed matter, materials, nuclear, whatever kind of physics, every grad student has to take what are called core courses, and there are eight of them. Let's see if I can do this first try. There is math methods, classical mechanics, computational physics, statistical mechanics, two courses in quantum mechanics, and two courses in electrodynamics eight in total. Now on top of those eight courses, which are 500 level, you also have to take a laboratory course, which is also 500 level, and then six credits or two classes at the 600 level, which is like the PhD level. So that is 11 courses in total. The grad school, of course, encourages you to take more than that, but that is just the bare minimum. But 11 courses, if you take three classes a semester, you could finish that in two years. And that might sound like a lot of time, but considering that nowadays it takes the average grad student upwards of five to six years to get their PhD, that's like three years of just doing your research and not taking courses. That's why the other day I was investigating other courses in the math department that I could take in my free time. If you have been following my journey, you know that last semester I took a course in math methods, quantum mechanics, and classical mechanics. This next semester I'm taking the second part of quantum mechanics, also taking computational and statistical mechanics. So six of those eight core courses will be done this year, which is... I think that that's nice to get them out of the way. Which means that next year I will only have two semesters of electrodynamics to finish out my core courses to pair in conjunction with my upper division courses, which will be me having to take an advanced experimental nuclear physics class. Yes, even though I'm going into theoretical physics, I have to take an experimental physics course, which is good. I should have to do that. And I'll take probably quantum field theory one and two as my 600 level electives. Now, as I said at the beginning, the 11 courses is just the bare minimum, so I will tack on a few other courses. They also let you do some independent study, through which I'll try to do some general relativity, maybe an actual course in quantum chromodynamics, as well as some courses in the math department. From what I understand, they do actually cover a fair amount of QCD in the second semester of quantum field theory, but the reason I'd want to independent study some is so that I can actually get my, my hands dirty with some either perturbative or lattice QCD taught by someone who researches it. Part of this video was meant to just say how many courses I have left to take in grad school, but the other part was to demonstrate that at the end of this year, I'm basically done with my core classes except for e and and I can start taking those specialty classes, which is really exciting. And I wouldn't have otherwise thought that that was the, the trajectory just after the first year of grad school. But that is about it for this video. For those of you who have been asking, I do not plan on tutoring this next semester. I think coupling that with TAing and video making would just be a little bit too much. Uh, for those of you who are studying physics and plan on going to grad school, are you going to go the experimental side or the theoretical side? Let me know in the comments section for what and why, and I'll see you guys there.